Next uh, speaker uh, is Mr. Dario Masahiko Yanagita, um, uh, Department Chief uh, to Brazil. You have floor. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are from Toyota do Brasil. My name is Dario. It's a privilege to have this opportunity to talk about our opportunities in energy efficiency and to show today the importance of this topic in relation to the environment. I see a few people I know. It's a pleasure to be here. So this is the timeline of Toyota do Brasil. Our history starts in 1958, 60 years ago. We started with the production of the Bandeirantes car at the São Bernardo plant. It's important to point out that Toyota do Brasil is the first Toyota plant outside of Japan. And we started producing Corolla, as you see here. And Hilux in Argentina. And we started to produce the manufacturer, the Corolla. In Indiatuba in 1998, Ethios in Sorocaba. In 2013, and engines at the Porto Feliz plant in 2016. This year, we started to manufacture the ERs at the Sorocaba plant as well. In Argentina, uh, from Argentina, we import the Hilux. These are the plants owned by Toyota do Brasil. We have four plants. All of them are located in the state of São Paulo. We have uh, one in São Bernardo, one in Indatuba, Sorocaba, and Porto Feliz. In terms of distance, all, all the plants are very close to the center of Sao Paulo, a 100 kilometer distance. São Bernardo plant is the oldest one, close to GM's plant. And the second plant was established in Indaiatuba and Sorocaba. And now the newest one is located in Porto Feliz. Here we point out what happened with our vehicles. We export Corolla and Etios to countries of South America. And this line, uh, this arrow going to uh, North America, are spare parts that we manufacture and we export. And we have a flow of import uh, of the Hilux from Argentina. So uh, now we are going to talk, to talk about energy related to the environment. We have the challenge, 2050 challenge. Our headquarters, Toyota uh, Motors Corporation, announced in October 2015. It, they launched this challenge. Uh, ch challenge and co contribution for a sustainable society. Six targets. Each one of these images here represent a challenge. For more details, you can find here the link of the website. In this, in this presentation, we are going to tell you what we are doing at Toyota do Brasil in each one of these six challenges. So uh, challenge number one is new vehicle zero CO2 emission. So
so as we already have uh, our market feature of consuming and uh, people buy flex vehicles flex fuel automobiles uh, both uh, fueled by gasoline and ethanol we already offer a renewable version a very sustainable one recently this year we've announced and we've started the development of the Prius it's a hybrid car with a flex fuel engine to use to, to have an even more efficient use of fuel the next challenge number two is life cycle zero CO2 emission. This comprehends suppliers, logistics, transportation, and our dealers. The first thing with suppliers, we promote a sharing of best practices, Kaizen's that we call imp continuous improvements through the association of Toyota suppliers and we study routes and solutions to emit less CO2 and recently we started to implement among our dealers the same mindset on how to measure environmental indicators and sharing among dealers the best practices so that altogether we can issue we can have less co2 emissions now challenge number four i skipped challenge number three because we are going to talk about it in more detail in challenge number four we have the minimizing and the optimizing of water usage and we took action to reduce water consumption at Toyota and one of the main consumers are car manufacturers the main consumers of water and from 2011 we've constantly reduced our water consumption and today we are 45 percent we achieved a 45 percent reduction in water consumption now challenge number five establishment of a recycling based society we encourage everyone around us to reduce their waste generation and to recycle whenever possible so this is not only for the plants but also for the community as a whole suppliers our dealers in challenge number six we want to establish a future society in harmony with nature we have actions at the plant and in the community with three main projects green wave projects today for tomorrow and education for sustainable development and still in challenge number six we have the promotion of the dream car art contest and it's good for Brazil but we had winners in 2015 and 2016 and we are therefore also promoting the environmental uh, concept outside communities that we usually deal with we have this link please uh, go to this link and encourage your children to participate in this movement so from now on we are going to talk about challenge number three it's the challenge related to energy efficiency 
In order to produce, to manufacture, we consume energy either as electricity or in natural gas. But when we consume energy, we have CO2 emissions. So working towards energy efficiency means that we are working towards issuing less CO2 and therefore we are contributing to the environment. So let's present the basic pillars that guide our activities. This is the first pillar. It's the Toyota Way. This pillar having the two basic pillars, continuous improvement and respect for people. Within continuous improvement, we have a challenge. Uh, Kaizen, uh, continuous improvement, and checking, checking things uh, uh, in low, at the in place. So, and for people, we have respecting people within a team and teamwork. We encourage teamwork. And this forms what we aim as development of human resources. The next pillar is the Toyota production system. This is the most famous one. We have two basic pillars, the just-in-time and the jidoka. Just-in-time means produce only what is needed in the amount needed and when needed with minimum resources. And here we conclude that using the minimum uh, resources only in the amount we need and only when we need it. The jidoka is a mechanism to stop automatically when defect is detected. One of the tools is the uh, visualization. And we identify and we highlight waste that is gen generated. And we call this in Japanese muda. The two basic principles are a base to set up a working routine. So it, there's a PDCA cycle. We turn it around. And as reflections arise, we have a new cycle, a new PDCA turning. And all this mechanism that I mentioned contributes for an ascending spiral of in, uh, continuous improvement. Now we are going to highlight two main items. One is related to measurement and control and the other concept is ABCD. So the supervision aspect at, at each Toyota plant we have a supervisory system of utility management. This is a screen of the control of the entire system. Utilities such as electricity, water, gas, and derivatives such as compressed air and vapor. In order to enable the implementation of Kaizen's and measure what's going on, we have uh, meters installed in strate at strategic points. The data gathered in the field are then transmitted to our central by different ways, either by internet, uh, optic fiber, or radio frequency. The result of these measurements are decoded and presented on the screens. In case there is a, an abnormality, a sound, an alarm uh, sounds. Now we are going to talk about an activity uh, at our shop floor that is very important. It's called the ABCD 
concept. The activity is to identify the type of energy use. So I have a day that starts in the first round, second round, and I have a floating of the energy use. I rank this energy as follows. Type A is a noble form of energy that I use only when I'm producing. So as you can see, there are uh, coffee breaks, meals, and when there is an interruption of use of energy. B, it's uh, an energy that I have to turn on and I can only turn off at, at the end of the shift. It doesn't matter if I have uh, breaks in the middle. C. When I turn on an oven, I have to turn it on before starting the production. And also uh, security systems, and I have to leave it turned on 365 days per year. So the idea is to first convert the less noble use to a uh, more appropriate use and on a second moment reduce the the volume of usage at toyota do brazil this concept was disseminated to all plants and departments and they promote and they control the activity. So we have the involvement of our high management, the vice president of Toyota do Brazil, participating in uh, Genki Genbutsu activities. And thanks to all this effort, we were at Toyota Japan and we were awarded this we are granted this award. This is below only the vice president of Toyota do Brazil, and he was present at this event. Let's now talk a little bit more about the development of human resources. All of our employees are encouraged to develop the project of quality control cycle. All of the works uh, have to comply with the standard that employees have to follow to comply with. So we establish the purpose, why they have to develop this work, how to clarify the, the issue. I'm going to establish a target an improvement target. I'm going to analyze the root cause and I'm going to boot the Genki Genbutsu, where is the problem? And I implement the countermeasure and I do a result evaluation, including the progress of the employee. <coughs> now we mentioned some examples. In this example, the functioning of compressed air it uh, obeys a controller and when since we implement a lot of kaizens we have to be attentive to the usage if we implement it at the controller level we would spend a lot of money so what happened uh, so this employee studied the control mechanism and they developed a control it with fewer resources. Therefore, we reduced our type B energy consumption and we emit less CO2. I'm going to go faster now. He says, so in the second example, the second equipment, we had a series of tryouts that the employees did to reduce the emission of energy. We converted the type of energy from B to C, from C to B, sorry. On the third one, on the cooling tower, 
we were able to link the functioning of an equipment with another one of production control, and we converted a, an energy B to A with 50% savings. And in this example, in painting an equipment that supplies air, can, uh, designed to work well economically in Japan was not working appropriately here and our employees studied thermodynamics and they studied the equipment and they implemented a solution to reduce in 93 percent energy consumption. So here uh, we really encourage teamwork, people from different areas contributing to a better result. This is the result of the reduction in CO2 emissions from 52% 52 per, uh, 52 decrease in relation to 2011. And it also allowed us to have this map this purple line, if we had maintained the emissions since 2013 and had done nothing with our production volume increasing, because we adopted renewable energy, we reduced the consumption of energy. And because of the, our improvements and our Kaizen measures, we have this red line this red curve and we intend to continue to reduce even more and uh, increase our renewable energy consumption sorry for uh, being late and i therefore conclude my presentation thank you for your attention thank you very much thank you yeah. um, I, I believe we can uh, learn a lot from uh, those uh, challenges